Kuda Kepang is a popular traditional dance from Java, Indonesia. It is often portrayed as a show for tourists and for special events. The dance has multiple names and it is known differently in different region. In West Java, it is called Kuda Lumpeng, and in Bali, it is called Sang Hyang Jaran. The origin of the dance, however, is uncertain. Some people say it originated during the war times against the Dutch colonial forces during Diponegoro's War. Some argue that it is based on Mataram-era troops riding against the Dutch before their kingdom was colonized. Another source believe that it originated from Wali Songo in his trials in spreading Islam in Java in the 15th century. From an outside perspective, the dance may seem harmless as many consider it as an art. However, many other people say it is more than just that. It is said that back in the day, the purpose of the dance is used to heal people from various illnesses. How? By asking the help from the devil. We read, listen, recount stories that fascinate us. It's the stories that we can relate to the most are the ones that become a part of who we are. It excites us knowing that living in the ordinary can also be extraordinary. From the tales and legends that are forgotten and the stories that keep us up at night, I bring you Stories from the Dark and I'm your host, The Enigma. The dance consists of five to nine dancers who are equipped with flat legless horses that are made from rattan or sometimes from wood. It is also adorned with traditional designs to make the horses look more attractive. It is said that during the performance, the dancers are actually possessed by the devil. The performance also requires five musicians where they play traditional music in the background by using musical instruments such as angklung, gendang, gong, jidur, kenong, boning, and small saran. It is said that the performance can take up to several hours, not more than 12, or else the spirits will permanently reside in the body of the dancers. The musicians are not allowed to stop playing in any way or else the possessed dancers will get angry and they will be attacked. In order to regulate the dancers, a master has to be in charge. They are called the Dalang. In order to be appointed as the Dalang, they have to go through an arduous ritual for three days. They are not allowed to sleep and they have to fast. They have to break their fast only by eating incense. They also have to chant certain mantras non-stop. During the three-day preparation, many Dalangs have reported that they have been disturbed by the devil. They say the nights are especially the scariest as the air gets colder than usual. They could also hear voices and see apparitions every now and then. Once they have gone through the preparation stage, the person is officially appointed as the Dalang, where they have the power to tame the devil that resides in the body of the dancers by using a whip. A shaman is also involved during the performance who is responsible in initiating the event and in protecting the audience from being influenced by the devil. As offerings, the shaman would prepare eggs, flowers, grass, coconuts, and water to the devil. Before the performance begin, the shaman would burn incense and read mantras in order to channel the spirits to the flat horses used by the performers. Once all the requirements are met, the performance is ready to commence. The following is the story of a traveler 
and his friends who went to Selangor, Malaysia to watch the performance firsthand. We were seated at a cement near a paddy field whilst waiting for the performance to begin. We can see the flat horses are on the ground waiting to be used by the dancers. After a while, we could hear the tune of the musical instruments which meant the show is about to start. The crowd cheered unanimously. Before the performers were able to enter the stage, the shaman first appeared before the crowd. He was standing outside of the stage and I can see him reciting a certain mantra silently. We were told that this was meant to connect the portal of the spirits to our world. At first, my friends and I were skeptic and we laughed it off. As soon as the shaman finished reciting his mantra, we could feel a surge of cool air sweeping into the crowd. The air was initially warm and now it is starting to feel colder than usual. This made me feel a bit uneasy. The performers started to enter the stage in a single line which was led by the master. As soon as the dancers were set in place, the master asked for volunteers amongst the audience to be involved as the dancers. After a few minutes, I didn't expect that three of my friends would volunteer to become the dancers. So the rest of my friends and I cheered happily not knowing what was about to come. They started off by circling around riding the flat horses and following the rhythm of the beat. Suddenly, the performers were screaming whilst looking at the sky. I find it quite eerie, which I'm sure many of the audiences would agree. Each of the dancers were wearing masks of different characters. There was a princess, a clown, and two others were using a tiger suit. Suddenly, the air became colder than it was a few minutes ago, and it really magnified the horror aspect of the performance. Things got weird really fast as the dancers took off their masks and proceeded to behave in an inhumane way. One of the dancers started biting off the husk of a coconut as if it was a monkey. Another dancer was slithering in the floor like a snake, whilst the other dancers were possessed by the spirit of a horse where they started galloping in circles in a perfect rhythm. In an effort to reassure the audience, the shaman said that he has placed a force field which protects the audience from being afflicted by the spirits. This reassured me and the audience for a little while that we were able to resume in taking photos of the performance. Suddenly, the shaman who was trying to contain the spirits of the dancers started to scream in the same manner as the dancers earlier. This immediately made me worry as the shaman is supposedly protecting us from the spirits. Now, the dancers started to become more erratic in their movements. The horse dancers are starting to break from their circle and started to run up to the nearby trees. Looking at the behavior of the shaman, it seems that he was possessed by a bird spirit as it flapped his wings and squatted underneath the nearby tree. Fortunately, the shaman managed to break out of his trance intermittently and remove the spirits of the dancers one by one. This went on for a few hours and many of the dancers were recovered from their trance. There was one dancer, however, that was difficult to contain and it was the tiger. The shaman wrestled with the tiger and it went on for more than two and a half hours, which made me worried about my friends who volunteered to join the dance as they are probably exhausted and are too terrified to stop. Luckily, one of the audience was brave enough to help my friends to stop performing. Two of my friends happily went back to their seats. As for my third friend, however, he refused to do so. He looked at the person with a grim expression and replied with a growl. As the person slowly pulled the wooden horse from him, he tucked the horse forcefully and continued dancing. The master then proceeded to whip my friend twice, in which he started to lower his wooden horse. The shaman then exercised my friend as if he was pulling an entity from his body. When the entity was removed, my friend staggered and was immediately 
told by the Dalang to sit at the audience's circle. This leaves the tiger as the final dancer in the ring. I don't really understand what the shaman did in the end, but he walked towards the drum and stood on it. He pointed at the sky and he gave a very loud scream. This made both the shaman and the possessed dancer collapse to the ground. After the performance ended, I was left terrified. Three of my friends who volunteered were sick the very next day. It is safe to say my friends and I will not be attending any more traditional performances with ritualistic background. If you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe, turn on your notification bell. If you have any horror stories you'd like to share with me, email us at theenigma at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.